Well, you see, to describe oneself is not so easy, particularly at a certain stage in life. But I'd like to, to tell you that my origins are different from my passport. My passport is different from my nationality. My nationality is different from my home. And that's the kind of world in which we are moving towards in the 21st century. Well, first of all, I've spent a whole lifetime in educating myself about the world <laughs> in which I live. <laughs> and uh, I had uh, what might be called a zigzag education, self-education, like many women who have children, who have to be in the labor market, come back in, educate yourself, look after the family, come back in again and so on. So in this way, I took about 20 years for formal and informal education. But I think I got educated in the university of life, as Gorky used to say and not in the formal schools or universities where I went in four continents. India, Bombay, <laughs> London, and then uh, in Geneva University where I did my thesis. And then now I'm actually a teacher, which means I'm learning and teaching in Canada. I am teaching United Nations and Development because I have actually worked 25 years in the United Nations, which has been, in a sense, my career. But before you start thinking something about the word career, let me tell you that I have come to the conclusion that women don't have careers, they have jobs. And there's a difference between the two. If you're a woman, then you have to struggle to keep your job, to have your job, to maintain your job, and so on. So it's not like men in the United Nations. Women working in the United Nations is very different from men working in the United Nations. Ich bin Mercedes Panica, <laughs> wohne in Barcelona, in Spanien, und habe ein äh, indischer Vater und eine katalanische Mutter. Deswegen bin schon von der neuen Art Leute, die für die Zukunft wichtig sind, Mestizos, also bin ich schon die Mischung da. Habe ich eine sehr gute Erziehung gehabt, habe gar nicht äh, geleitet dadurch, dass ich eine Frau bin, gar nicht. Ich habe überall guten Erfolg gehabt, habe drei Brüder, genau dieselbe Erziehung, vielleicht noch besser als die anderen Brüder. Hat mein Vater mich immer sehr nah zu ihm im Geschäft gehabt, habe ich ein großes Geschäft äh, geführt, mit 30 Jahren schon und war Generaldirektor von einer chemischen Firma, die produzierte. Dann bin ich äh, auch, äh, habe ich eine, war zum ersten Mal eine Frau, ist Präsidentin von einer internationalen Union von Chemikern, vom Lederchemiker gewesen. We do not know how much wealth women produce. You do not know in your country or my country or her country how much women produce in wealth, not in babies. Everybody knows that because we can count the babies and we got the statistics for that. But how much wealth do we produce? And out of this wealth, how much do we get back? What are we entitled to? And therefore, in 1980, and I consider it a great privilege that I offered to the world through the United Nations the following statistics which I'm going to give you now, which remain more or less true. There is only a minor change. And that is that women are 50% of the population, one third of the workforce. They earn 5% of world's income and they own only 1% of assets or property. Now, the movement from that statistics, which this was done in 1980, is so slight that it is not worth counting. So what does that mean? That means that in the wealth that is accumulated in the world and that the global wealth of nations, women's part of it is very small. That is the reason why women everywhere in all countries, whether you are a socialist or you are capitalist or mixed economy or you are German or you are developed or you are North American or you are Brazilian, in all countries women are poorer than men. Why? You know why. 
because we also know when there are ethnic when there is ethnic conflict like in bosnia when there is a religious war like in ireland when there are riots between arabs and israel or india pakistan imagine imagine do you ever hear a woman getting up from her house taking a gun taking a knife going to the neighbor's place and killing and raping people or something of this type do women do that we need to recognize that women have life saving power that women really contribute to life gr growth and therefore the important point to recognize is that they are not the one who get up to destroy life and it is this distinction between men and women that needs to be recognized for future life we have the life rhythm and the life is very conscious in our nature because we give life and they change completely the attitude not only towards nature but towards the structure of societies and i think it's a great responsibility of women who stay at home and don't care about how is the situation of the world i think it's time to awake to wake the the woman to tell them you have to do something like because what? exercise the power according to some philosophers the the na nature of power is to dominate to dominate somebody else but i do not think that that is the kind of philosophy that i naturally adhere to which is to dominate but if you change the nature of power in such a sense that you will nature and humanity and ideology and philosophy of life you balance it in harmony in the future suppose we move towards that kind of life then the contribution of women will be very great but what's happening now is that society and particularly those who are decision makers are feeling under threat they feel that if you give so much power to women so much privilege to women then what will happen to us the decision makers whom we call in our organization women's world summit foundation 25% because 75% of the world population are women and children and they are on the receiving end of the line they are outside development they are socially and politically excluded who are the decision makers that 25% mostly male unfortunately up to now now the question is there is a threat those are the people who belong to the military those are the people who decide that everything we do in life must have a market or gain or profit everything is seen in terms of money income but i do not think the women's view of the world is to see everything to commercial lines or market and so on so therefore this trend towards privatization and so called liberalization and globalization of the world economy is going to be very harmful to women yesterday we heard that the key of the parliament something i was very astonished i didn't know that one of the problems for getting rid of the nuclear weapons was that the destruction was not was such a tremendous ecological problem that technological has not been solved so they could not destroy it, what they had produced. And, and that is a schizophrenic. And that is where we are now. The fact of being a woman by itself is not enough for the transformation of society. What you need is more than that. You need another type of ideology. I think I would say that most ideologies up to now that we have known in history or this century are now dying or declining so we need another ideology of course with women i agree with you but then the question of power is important how do we change the nature of power when they came to power the question arises did they use power differently from men that is the question and i would like to give the following answer i think in some areas they did and in other areas they did not when it come to the question of war and peace the difference was not very much whether you are a man or a woman because we have had wars when you talk of the world economy the contribution of mrs thatcher was really to 
bring the world to a tremendous catastrophe, a world economic system which does not work at all. And we find out that the women managers were doing exactly the same style as men. So to find out what the woman could produce in power, we had to go to the small enterprise. The, the, the woman owes the, the, the business. And then she was shown Kennedy with all the risk. And going to the power question, is, as she was saying, that is really the clue of the, the thing. The power is to have the decision, to be able to decide in the last level, in the middle level, in the very small level. And the woman is used to these decisions. She takes every day small decisions. So the decision taking and the risk taking, that is to exercise. How you exercise in a hierarchical way, in a horizontal way, motivating people, creating new uh, original ideas or whatever do. That is every person creativity. But the, uh, the real nature of power is to have the decision and the decision with all the risk. So if I say that has to be like that and I want the war to declare only the person who has the, the real power can declare a war or can make a peace. So I think that the whole structure of the society how the power has been used until now is conducted to a catastrophe. And we as women cannot be passive on that because I think that we have the solution for that. The world economic system is breaking down. The international social order does not exist. The political structures are completely disintegrated. In this scenario, how far can women retain what they have gained that is the question and my view is that they can retain 75 percent of it if not 100 percent because women are not going to go back ever ever again to that point from where they began when they were considered to be only good for motherhood but now it's time that the woman should start to change the society with full rights, because she's better prepared, and but not doing anything in this system, because the system is rotten. The system is male system, and that is in a, in a way bankrupt already. Therefore, so much unemployment, therefore these problems of ecology, therefore this whole economic disequality between North and South, and all that is unbearable. And it's not that we women want to do something. It's that the humanity needs the new outlook from women. It's not that we want to fight for our rights. It's that they need our way of doing things. They, I mean the humanity and the society and the political people. I mean, to me, I think we have to define, redefine democracy because otherwise it means that actually democracy as defined by politicians have no impact on the life of women we are human beings first of being women and as human beings we are responsible for the world and it's true that they did not uh, ask they did not allow us to go into the decision making uh, spheres but it's also true that there are many men who are disappointed of this system and who are looking for something new. And that is what we women should provide to the men. Therefore, these women who are only thinking of fighting to achieve um, rights, they have to go a little further. They have to, on Gandhi's way, discover this other power. When, after independence of India, Gandhi was offered all types of status the highest possible in the country and he walked away from power he is the only man in this century who walked away from power when and when walking away from power he had tremendous power because whatever he did the entire country followed him that was the power he had but he had no formal power the one who uses the power has no power the, the more you use it the less you have it and if you abuse it, you lose it. I think that's Confucius. And as long as... What is your answer? 
My answer is as long as women remain poor, there can be no human progress, no development, no forward march of humanity. And the so much violence that we have in the world, we cannot possibly eliminate it if you discriminate against women and keep on beating them and having violence against women. Once you remove, eliminate violence against women, and women can play their own part and stand up and own the wealth that they have produced, be creative in the world, then I think we shall have a kind of society which I like to call a woman's country. It's a dream, as I say, that women scream and dream. But we must continue to dream. We also need to scream sometimes. We have to. We have to protest.